beef kingy. Less than 10% fat. Let's try and dry fry it. It's all fat in the bank. Dry frying the meat until it's browned gives it a caramelised flavour and any veg we add can suck it up. Oh, there can't be many calories in celery and onions. For goodness sake, have you ever seen a fat rabbit? Oh, this is sweating down like you on a treadmill. Hey! <laughs> Do you know what I'm finding hard, Si? No. That, exactly. Yeah. It's not eating when I'm cooking. The temptation to get a spoon and have three or four spoonfuls of that. And we both do that. Yeah, we do. And then you wonder why we just come to the table and you say, oh, it's funny how I don't fancy my own food. The fact is we've eaten a meal whilst we're cooking the meal. Like any ragu, it needs red wine. Normally, we'd slosh in about half a bottle, but booze means calories, so this time it's around a glass. 150 millilitres of wine. Whilst that bubbles away, I'm going to have a crack at turning leeks into sheets. I reckon by slicing the leeks to the centre, that'll create separate layers. Oh, God! That's a pasta sheet, but not. Brilliant, isn't it? Hey, well done, smart ass. <laughs> Let's see you try and roll no carbohydrate rice now. Mm, genius, is it? By blanching them in boiling water, they should soften enough to flatten them out. Well, it's held together, hasn't it? Yeah, it has. Well, this looks like a ragu, Kingy, and that looks like pasta. It does, doesn't it? Aye, I'm oh. really quite surprised, mate, at how it's come out, actually. Well, all we're missing now is some cheese sauce. Yeah, like a white, just like a plain white sauce thing, yeah? Yeah. And yeah. well, then put all the cheese on top so it really delivers. Well, then we're likely to use less cheese, aren't we? Aye. It's a cheese sauce without cheese, so we need to infuse this semi-skimmed milk with loads of flavour. So in with onion, bay leaves and a good bit of nutmeg. That's sort of boil, infuse and then thicken. Normally, we'd use a butter and flour roux base to thicken a white sauce, but we know that making a paste with milk and corn flour will do the trick. Now, look, would you not think that that was a cheese sauce? You would. It needs to look like lasagna, so we're layering it up. That's looking alarmingly appetising, isn't it? And then, three leaves of pasta. Not. My mouth is beginning to water. We're alternating layers of the ragu with our sneaky leaky faux pasta. Looks like lasagna, Kingy. The white sauce is just for the top. Oh, that's glossy and unctuous. Why? We'll top it with cheese, but not a lot. By using strong cheeses like mature cheddar and parmesan, a little goes a long way. Looking bigger now, it's grated. It's not like a good one. We eat with our eyes first, and then the tongue follows, so it's got to look great. That does look like a lasagna, though. Bacon. We can't give up bacon, can we? What can it do? It's the fruit of the pig. But bacon, it's dead fatty. So how about we try a lean cut like back bacon and give it an extra trim? Could have cut the fat off. You can feed it to the birds. Cos you can't give it up, can you? I mean, you know, on a Saturday morning, you get up, you know, you fancy a bit of something, don't you? It's sex. It's true. And you think you burn calories. It's great. I feel more, more virile, more potent, don't you? I do. I'm like... Um, <laughs> Moving swiftly on, we're picking up tips all the time and we know there's around 40 calories per teaspoon of oil. So how about this as a way to use it sparingly? So I'm just going to paint the pan. We're using sunflower oil because obviously it's got a high burning temperature, so it's good for frying. See, it's that sizzle in the morning. You don't have to give it up. No, no. And poached eggs aren't off the menu either, and we're experts at getting them spot on. Take your stomach rumbling then. <laughs> Place the eggs in boiling water for precisely 20 seconds. Go. No more, no less. And this will cause the white just to kind of solidify a little bit so you won't have a pan full of Doctor Who monsters. 20 seconds. And the eggs come out. White wine vinegar. I always slosh in a good glug to help the eggs bind together. Enough, Mr King, do you think? Perfect, mate. And just float that egg into the water. Look at that, see? There you go. There is a lovely, comforting feeling, frying bacon. Yes. You get a full plate of food with a fry-up, so what can we add to bring fat-free flavour, yet freshness? Tomatoes, mugger, please. Right. Let's dry-fry cherry tomatoes with the bacon. That'll bring out their natural sweetness. I 
still get the ritual of cooking with what we're doing. And actually, what we're doing is still a very tasty dish. It is. So instead of toast, we've got watercress. Watercress is great because it's savoury and peppery. Not only that, there's only 20 or so calories in a whole bag. That's good. There can be over 90 in a slice of white toast. What's getting me going, King, is it's looking like a good place of food. Lovely. Well, that's a poached egg. That is. It's just that right level, whereas when you cut into it, it's going to ooze on your bacon. Ooh, oh, the breakfast sensation. Perfect. How about we drizzle on some balsamic vinegar? Combined with the cherry tomatoes, it'll add a ketchup hit. Why don't we start with what we know? So we'll start with the classics onion, celery, carrot. Building blocks of flavour. Potatoes! Good lean mince, stock, yeah. and a few embellishments just to beef that flavour up. Yeah, chilies. Yeah? Chili beef, meat and potato pie. There's no oil in here, so we're dry frying this. Dry frying is second nature to us now. But lean mint still has some fat in it, which helps the veg caramelise and gives it a lush, meaty flavour. You know, I still think my favourite pie is the meat and potato. Can it's it classic. Yeah, you can it whack it, can you? Yeah. It is just quintessentially the pie of pies. We're all right with the filling, but it's the pastry that's the elephant in the room. Hey, Dave, if you take the butter or lard out of pastry, what you've got is essentially a bread dough. True, Kingy, or even better, pizza dough. Ready-bought pizza base mixes. They're really low in fat. Basically, it's a bread dough mix, but it's a pizza, so it's bread dough that you can roll out. Yeah? Yeah. All we do is add the hot water, according to the instructions on the packet, make a dough and use that instead of pastry. Well, that's good because it's... it's malleable. Yeah. It's tough. Yeah. It's low in fat, as you said. Yeah, not, no butter, no lard, as there would be in ordinary pastry. So, and it browns nicely. It's a plan, Kingy, but will it give us that scrumptious, chewy texture of a real full-fat pie? You know when this tight's finished, Kingy? Yeah. I'm going to weigh up bags of rocks till I get to what I've lost. And then just sit and look at it. Yeah, and then lift it, make myself lift it and run up the stairs with it. Just to remind myself that's what will happen again if I put it all back on. On this low-carl adventure, our mandra is flavour, flavour and more flavour. There's no need for slim light food to be dull, so we're adding ketchup, brown sauce and Worcestershire. And for spice, chilli flakes and chilli powder. Give it a good stir and the stock will help cook the potatoes. Again, no calories in pepper. Actually, there is, Si. Not many, but they all count. If this crust works, I'll be made up. Because I think we thought this was going to be one of the biggest dieting challenges, didn't we? Without a doubt, the yes, pie. And particularly with the pressure of the pie master. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> we want these little beauties to be a feast for the eyes as well as the belly. So I'm brushing them with milk. For just a few calories, it'll turn them into a lovely brown golden colour, just like the real thing. I've read that phyllo has a third fewer calories than your average short crust pastry. Perhaps if we put a few sheets together, we can create a crust with a bit of bite. Just paint it with oil and you get the thinnest but perfect smearage. You know what we need is a filling that feels really extravagant. Bacon is a classic that I bet we can afford if we treat it with care. Now, I'm judiciously taking the fat off the bacon because I'm watching our weight. So if We're you... watching our weight disappear, Mr King. The thing is, as well, is although the food may be frugal in calories, it's maxed up with taste. Kingy, if I double up the edges of the phyllo, we might just be able to get a robust, crispy crust. Now, I've just put the bacon in. You can see there's a little bit of colour. And by caramelising the bacon and the onions, we should be able to pump up the flavour without adding more fat. The average slice of bacon and egg quiche can set you back nearly 300 calories or more. The roux base alone, butter, cream and flour, is a regime-wrecking disaster. Ah, no. Let's make the white sauce with corn flour and milk. Then there'll be no need for butter or cream. This is a lovely recipe, you know. It's good cooking. It is, mate. Yeah, it is. 
Adding the asparagus to the mix is a stroke of genius, even if I do say so myself. I'm going to put half of this mixture in the pastry case. Spread it out evenly. I just want everybody to have a bit of bacon, a bit of onion. You know, it looks lush, and I reckon we can get away with one more hit of luxury, a light scraping of parmesan. Every slice has got a nice topping of golden cheese. And you've got the bacon and the onions, the asparagus, or a thick, eggy sauce with that lovely, crispy phyllo pastry. And you're on a diet! This little belter is only 245 calories per slice. That looks brilliant. 